Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and as a lifelong Ella Fitzgerald fan, this thing just rocks my world, I'll tell you. Now, I have already video blogged two other Ella concert posters from the 1930s, one with Chick Webb like this, and one without because it came after his death in late 19... he died in mid-1939. So, to have this terrifically fun, wow, new discovery from the 1930s is just such a kick in the pants with this compelling light blue design. Take a look at that. And what's great is that it pictures them both. Look at that. Chick with an artistic rendering and Ella with a photograph. Oh man, that is sweet and nice. Now, since it's so relevant to this video blog, I'm going to show you a poster that I've already video blogged separately years ago, and that's the only other Chick and Ella concert poster we know of. And here it is, you probably recognize it. It's been bootlegged a lot and so forth. Um, 1938 exactly for this one, and we know because the venue box is filled in there, so it's easy to pinpoint the year. Obviously the other one, the blue one, has a blank space up there on the top. But you know, this one is just this wonderful brown, orange, and black design, and Chick, very much the big star, and Ella, as you can see, the up-and-comer down there at the bottom. So again, I have done a separate video blog. I go into great detail for the sweet piece. Um, but one thing I would like to... Sweet piece? Did I say that right, Pete? Um, I would like you to take a look for a second at the artistic rendering of Chick's face, and I'm going to compare it for you here. Isn't it interesting to note the difference in the two artistic renderings of the famous drummer? They're just entirely different, man. One is serious, the other has a big smile. One he's looking right at you, and the other one he's looking up. One is in four colors, brown, orange, black and white, and the other is just in black and white, although you have a lot of shades of gray in there. And they're very different hairstyles, so it's just really fascinating to compare the two, because, you know, they're only just a year or two apart. So naturally the first question is, which one of these came first? Well, you know, chronologically, almost certainly the other one, because Ella was bottom billed down there without a picture, and here she's elevated to almost co-headlining status. You know, it all changed for Ella in the summer of 1938, when her smash, I should say Chick Webb's smash with Ella singing, another co-headlining thing, a tisket a tasket was number one for two and a half months in the summer of 1938, and that enabled Ella to be billed from that point forward the First Lady of Swing, as she is on here, and later to morph into, at the end of the Swing era, into the First Lady of Song. But, uh, you know, we don't know the exact timing of this because it is a tour blank, as you can see up there at the blank space at the top. But, you know, a Tisket a Tasket was the summer of 1938, and Chick died in June of 1939, so that's a pretty darn narrow window here. By the way, the other poster has also been spotted from 1937. So that pretty much puts that first, and this one second. But you know, there's such a narrow window at like 10 or 11 months that it is possible this was designed and printed up like this ahead of time, and then never used. You know, maybe it was run off in the spring of 39, and then, you know, Chick got hospitalized and stuff and passed away, and until I find one, we find one with venue information printed up above, we can't say for sure it was used. Although if I had to guess, I think when, you know, they go to the trouble of doing something like this, it was probably used for at least a short period of time. Okay, getting in on the fun color area there, well, I guess that's the only area, there's nothing in the venue box. It does say, the king of the drums, I'll come in for a closer look, and uh, that is on top of, you know, a nice musical staff there with notes on it, that looks pretty cool. And then the upper right corner, it does say, CRA Presents, that's the agency, but I couldn't put my finger on exactly the full name of the agency there. And then, America's Greatest Swing Band. Isn't that fun? Well, wow. And uh, also notice the light blue and white drum kit behind Chick. That's sort of a subtle thing, but very nice design element, absolutely. And then the big obvious words here, you know, when I'm going to say Chick Webb and his orchestra featuring Ella Fitzgerald, the First Lady of Swing, read off for completion's sake there. You know, in that lettering, though, there's this really fun, subtle design technique I noticed. Um, the two names, Chick Webb and Ella Fitzgerald, sort of look like four different fonts were used. But, if you look carefully, Chick has drop shadowing on it. It's against the light blue background, so it's got that black drop shadowing on the letters. 
and Ella uses the same font but no drop shadowing because it's on a solid black background. And then you move to their last names and Webb is on the solid black background and Fitzgerald has that drop shadowing against a light background. So I think it's two fonts with four different looks on those names. Very interesting design method. If you're a graphic designer, you're probably knowing, nodding your head and know exactly what was going on. So I surely have to mention it's the only thing I haven't. Ella's smiling face there in floating head fashion. Love that. And then down at the very bottom in the white margin business it says Personal Management Gale Incorporated and that's Ella's manager Mo Gale. So boy I'll tell you just a remarkable specimen. Beautiful early find and if you, never mind the poster itself, if you even have or see an image of this with the venue box filled in please kindly that'd be awesome if you could email it to me or whatnot and I'd love to see it to help date and you know get the files up to date on exactly if and when this baby was used. But I'll tell you even if it wasn't used it was struck back then absolutely this thing is from the late 1930s so it would frame up beautifully just as it is. Ah, I love this. Love new discoveries. That's the you know that's the lifeblood of any hobby I suppose and it's just a wonderful wonderful piece so Huh. Hope you enjoyed seeing it today. Thanks a lot for your time and dropping by and catch you again for something probably not a you know a new discovery, but something hopefully just as fun. Okay, have a good day. Bye bye.